Okay, so motherboard review time, and yes, the NZXT N7, which is what I'm gonna be taking a look at today, has been around a little while. Well, quite a while, but I have been trying to get it for quite a while as well. But the fact that it has been out for quite a, a large amount of time does also give us a good chance to see if the NZXT N7 has um, been able to better itself from its not quite glowing reviews that it got when it was first launched. So obviously I'll be using a clean install of Windows, the very latest BIOS and applications on it as well, as I normally would. So really it's time to see, have they been able to sort it out? So we'll go for a good full rundown on the board, just for those of you that may not have seen anything. Now, one thing that I will say is there has been a little bit of confusion about some of the stuff that comes in the box. Um, so it, we, it does talk about the stuff that's connected to it here, but just looking around the outside, blah, 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 and it doesn't say, essentially, right, the long and short of it is there isn't a great deal inside the box once you get rid of the motherboard. You get four SATA cables, you get an SLI bridge, you get your, um, your IO shield for the back, and then you get some extended screws so that because of the shroud so that you can screw it in. Now, my issue then is these little uh, LED strips and extensions because when the board was first launched, there was press releases and loads of noise going around that NZXT removed these to keep the price down. Uh, the e-tailers that I've seen in the UK do not mention this being in as part of the box. They do list the SATA cables and all the other stuff, but they don't mention this. And there was loads of um, uh, reports online that this wasn't included. When I got my review sample, this was not included. So then I had to contact NZXT and say, I didn't get this, is that correct? I just want to make sure that I've got the complete package. Then they sent me this. But still, when I pushed them and said, e-tailers are saying it's not included, la 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 la, I didn't actually get a co confirmation of what's going on. So to be honest with you, there's more, and I don't talk to NZXT directly in the UK, I have to talk to their agency. So you email the agency and then you wait at least a day because then the agency then in, uh, emails NZXT HQ and they will reply either on American time or on uh, Taiwanese time, depending on who's got to answer it. So it's a long winded, stupidly drawn out process um, and I still don't have a direct answer. So I'm going to go with the fact that none of the e-tailers stocking this board say that they come with it. So if they're not listing it as coming with it, then they, uh, I'm gonna assume that it doesn't. If it's a bonus, it's a bonus. If it does, it's a bonus. If um, the e-tailers have got that wrong NZXT, then you need to get them to fix it because none of us know what's going on, including your agency. So that's the board, that's the box. Sorry, that's the box, now the board. So the board does come with this lovely shroud. You can get the shroud in multiple different colors. You can get that depending on what you want. I like white. I didn't ask for white, but they were clever enough to send me a white one. Um, this part of the shroud is metal. The bulk of the shroud, um, or the clip-on bits of the shroud, can be uh, plastic, like, for argument's sake, the M.2 covers. And they do pull off quite easily because they've got little um, pop tabs on them. And uh, although I pulled that middle one off, which is literally just the... Uh, that's literally just a cover to make it look pretty. This one, as you can see, is uh, at the bottom, it covers up the PCI poster reader and then an M.2. There is another M.2 up here, but we have an issue because these are plastic. There are no thermal pads or anything on them. And believe it or not, in the manual, NZXT say, if you fit an M.2 in, do not fit this over the top. So you'd end up with this looking like this, which if you've got your graphics card, um, uh, bolted in, as you'll see it's below, you're gonna see that right above there. If you have it in the bottom, essentially this straight away screams, oh my God, what the chuff is going on. So they want you to remove this if you fit an M.2. And the reason for that is because it's plastic and there's no thermal pads or anything like that, it becomes an M.2 
insulator. Now some of the M.2s out there, I mean some are worse than others, the Samsung ones are normally alright, but some of them out there can get a bit warm. So you would quite literally have to keep that off and then it ruins the look of the board and makes the, the shroud completely pointless in my, in, in my um, eyes. Because if I had to remove that, I'd then, just because of the way it looked, I'd want to remove everything. So this side of things, this should have been a really tasty metal um, um, uh, heat sink that went over the top that then cooled the M.2s down and not something that was just going to insulate it. But we can pull these all off again. And then what we can do is uh, you can also remove the uh, heat sink cover. Now don't forget, this can all be changed as well. The uh, VRM heat sink one actually comes off really easily. This one, of the, the top of this is actually metal. It's steel, it's pretty good. Now you can see the VRM heat sinks there. Pretty basic design, you know, it's nothing particularly aesthetic, but the VRMs did actually do a pretty good, well they were cooled pretty well. So we were getting, um, if you want to go and have a look at the full breakdown of the review by the way, go and have a look on the OC3D forums. We've got all the graphs and stuff there. There's lots and lots more for us to talk about. You can go and see all the benchmarks. I will talk to you about overclocking and everything later on in the video. But um, yeah, so VRMs, there is a VRM graph on the website and the VRMs did do pretty well. They, they've done an all right job there. They've um, amazingly, as far as VRM temperatures are concerned, they've actually done a better job than Gigabyte, amazingly. Um, but anyway, so VRMs, you can see that there's chuffing loads of them all scattered around there. They're on doublers and stuff anyway. But by removing that part of the shroud, we can actually see the uh, fans. But I want to take the rest of it off to show you the whole lot because it does pretty much just pull off. And it, it's on like little sprung clips at the back. Now I'm doing it on the camera so you can actually see me doing it. But you can see what I mean about the sprung clips. And because of the shroud, that's why you need the extended bolts. But then when we do get the bare board up itself to be honest with you if it came to m.2s and i was absolutely hell-bent on buying this board and hell-bent on m.2s i probably would run it like this because it's not a bad looking board like that it's just it's all black it, it looks all right there's nothing bad to report about it yes the heat sinks are a bit kind of they look like they're just forged and got pulled off of an aluminium supply shelf but they work and they're black, so there's nothing particularly bad to say about it. Fan headers you got up here, this is System Fan 4, System Fan 5, System Fan 6, CPU fan, AIO pump. And then there are a load more fan headers down here. You don't get the normal one here that you may be used to, and there's no fan headers down this side. You do get a power and a reset switch. I showed you the PCI poster before. M.2, M.2. Around this back, you get four SATAs. That's a, a horizontal USB 3 there. There's a vertical USB 3 there. Something that they have done, which I really like, is you get three USB 2s. Now, this will be because NZXT obviously make their own AIOs, make their own power supplies, that sort of thing. So USB 2s are great. Obviously, though, you can get a USB 2 hub if you've not got enough. But with this, you know, you've got the option of connecting them all in here. I do quite like a USB hub, though, because then you can stash it around the back of the case and you don't have to look at stuff. Um, you do get a couple of uh, NZXT specific RGB ports up here. Now that's what the, the cables were for that I was showing you before. You can connect there. Um, this all connects up to the cam software, but these are specific for their um, lights, AIOs, that sort of stuff. So you've got the option there. So it's their own specific ports. There's no normal four pin ones or anything scattered around. Um, you, uh, blah, blah, blah. yeah. 8-pin up here, otherwise the layout is fairly the same. When we come round the back, don't we've got the HDMI, the display port here, don't forget you need to, most of the, all of the, I should say, have got the onboard video, um, but don't forget if you use the graphics card, I've see, seen people say before about having a graphics card in here and then plugged in here and wondering why their games aren't playing. But one something around the back is this is USB Gen 3, We've um, not got any USB Gen 3.1 and definitely no USB Gen 3.1 Gen 2. Um, so it's uh, the, the connectivity around the back is a bit sort of 
lacking for want of a better term you get a couple of usb 2s here usb 2s there uh yeah that side of it is not particularly great maybe they had to sacrifice this for these or something like that i genuinely don't know but compared to some of the newer boards out there on the market now this section around the back here is not particularly what i was expecting around the back you've still just got the satin pcb it looks all right uh, obviously we're not going to be particularly looking at it but aesthetically it did the job okay so now on to the chit chat about the actual using it side of things and i will reiterate if you want to go and have a look at the graphs go to the oc3d website so that you can have a look so first and foremost overclocking i didn't run any overclocking tests and there is a massive massive reason for that and that is you can't actually decide what you want the voltages to run at. So if you change the multiplier, the board then decides what voltage that you get. And the best that we can understand by flicking through loads of the tests and the settings that we've done is that as you change the multiplier, the voltage seems to change step by step. Now we were getting over 1.4 volts with a 50 multiplier on this for a five gigahertz overclock. Now I would personally say that with a board that's gonna cost this much, which is somewhere between 250 to 275 pounds, and that then literally puts it in the high-end MSI carbon um, territory. It puts it in the sort of territory of the Gigabyte Aorus Gaming 7. It puts it into the territory of the big daddy of the pack, the Hero, the Maximus 10 Hero. Uh, and on some websites, this board costs more than all of the other boards. So the little baby of the pack goes yomping in with a huge price hike than compared to some of the other boards. And to then not being able to, do, to be able to uh, manually control your own volts for an overclock, I think that's a bit of a uh, airheaded decision. Now, essentially, I don't know whether they've made it for people that don't particularly know any better. They might be thinking that they're just literally selling this to people that are uh, I think the nicest way I can put it is very early on on their PC master race journey. Um, but for those of us out there that may have been looking at this board as being an incredibly good looking, it's a lovely aesthetically pleasing board, to then let us down with something as simple as manual volts is a little bit of a mistake. No scratch that, it's a huge chuffing great behemoth of a mistake. The board is actually the OEM is ECS. Now, if you've not really heard of ECS before, it's probably all well and good because they do make a lot of low end stuff. They do make stuff for other people, but as far as my motherboards are concerned, it's a lot of low end stuff. And the, the, a lot of the kind of little glitches with this have really come down to a, an incredibly lackluster BIOS, which even though the BIOS didn't look particularly great, using it wasn't that bad. It's just all of the kind of coding that's going on behind the scenes is pretty much letting the board down. Now I have already said that um, I did do some tests with the VRMs and even with a stupidly high voltage, which it put through it, and it was the only test I was willing to do, the VRMs didn't get that hot. So that also is a pretty big kick in the teeth to someone like Gigabyte that I've been making motherboards for years and they still produced a motherboard with lower temperatures than the Gaming 7. It's one of the things I've always been moaning about with them. So that's, as far as this board is concerned, the VRM temps were probably the best thing I've got to say about it. So when it came to the rest of it, we didn't bother doing the overclock full range of tests because in all honesty, with the volts that this thing was putting through it, I would not advise you to uh, use it with an overclock. So yeah, 275 pound board up there with something like the Maximus 10 Hero, Gigabyte Gaming 7, or the Big Daddy um, MSI Carbon Board, and I'm telling you not to overclock on it because of the volts. And it's not because of, like I was saying with the Aorus uh, Ultra Gaming, I was saying don't overclock on it because the VRMs are gonna overheat. These, they don't overheat, but everything else, including all the volts, it's all kind of a bit wibble and not really worth bothering with. Then we get to the shroud. I loved look of the shroud. The shroud for me would have been the reason why I would have bought it until I found out that you had to pull off bits of the shroud to be able to use an M.2 without them cooking themselves to death because the plastic covers are insulators. So you pretty much ruin the look of the board if you're gonna run an M.2. Now, if you buy a 275 pound board, do you honestly think that you're just going to run a normal solid state drive or a mechanical drive for the rest of the, the, the system's life. 
I don't think so. I think if you've got this much money for a motherboard, you're probably gonna have an M.2 in there somewhere and it gets ruined by this bit. So the bit that I love the most is one of the biggest ruining, flipping, I wanna swear so badly parts of it because having to remove this just makes it look ugly. And the problem is, is when you do boil all that down, no overclocking, can't really use an M.2 without it making it look ugly or risking the fact that your M.2 is gonna overheat, literally covering it up. It depends on the drive that you use. I've got some drives that do specifically get really hot and I use those in the systems to see how things go along. The Corsair MP500 is known for being a warm M.2 drive. I quite literally categorically would not say to cover one of those drives up with this. One of the Samsung drives that inherently run a little bit cooler, you could get away with it, but you're gonna be running somewhere around the 20 to 30 degrees hotter mark at idle, or at least after a decent gaming run because of this plastic cover, because it literally just covers it entirely. It's like tucking it up in a lovely warm duvet in the winter. So that again, it's a huge flaw. And then you get down to the point where nobody seems to know what's going on with the RGB connectors. The agency says one thing, all of the e-tailers are saying another. I asked an e-tailer, they said it's not in the box. Um, and so, and then, and if you also think about, and this is the other thing, is that I'm not saying anything new that people haven't said about for a while, specifically the BIOS tie-in and that sort of thing. And it's the fact that it's been out for such a long time and they've not even really unhooked that direct tie-in with the multipliers and the voltages that makes me wonder what the chuff is going on. They put it up there with big overclocking boards for big systems. So the, the thing with this is, is it really does come down to, if you're not gonna use an M.2, if you're not that fussed about overclocking, or you're not that fussed about someone giving you many, many, many more volts than you're ever gonna possibly need to get a decent overclock out of your CPU and never be able to learn later and then turn them down. And you literally wanna build a system full of NZXT parts to just look nice, then that's the time that you can buy this board. If any of those factors put you off, then sadly, you need to go and look at something else. So. My advice for NZXT for the next one would be you've got to sort the M.2s out because that's just not good enough in the market nowadays. Not being able to decide your own volts for a board of this price, just not good enough for a board in this market either. And if, in all honesty, for the way that this board performs and the limitations, the cheapest I've been able to find this is 24999. And that's literally hunting around, going and you know finding places that, yeah, just most of them are around 275 quid. I don't personally think I'd even be recommending you buy this if it was 149 pounds. So it's ridiculously overpriced for something that's just all about aesthetics. But the problem is those aesthetics get ruined the moment that you wanna put an M.2 drive in it. So it's just full of little issues that really make it one not to bother about. And the best thing about it is, I'm not the first person to have said it.